Bonjour everyone, welcome <laughs> back to Adobe Live. Today I am joined by Pauline Goyard, uh, hopping over from the French streams uh, of Adobe yes. Live. So welcome to the first uh, first appearance on the UK stream, I believe. Yes, oh. thank you very much. I'm super happy to be here, so hi everyone. If you didn't get your dose of French accent today, it's a perfect time. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so a first, uh, before we get into it, a few things to note. Um, myself, I am suffering massively with hay fever. Uh, I have got the triathlon of hay fever. My eyes are swimming, my nose is running, and I haven't thought this through enough to know what's cycling, but something in my face is not waking up. Um, so I'm just going to say apologies if I'm a, a little bit sniffly and whatever. Um, it's the hay fever. It's uh, it, it's just getting to me. <laughs> anyway. It's okay. Um, you can sneeze as much as you want. So. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a big mute button. I can just mute it and yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so welcome to uh, Adobe Live. If you are watching us on YouTube, um, that's cool. You can hang out there and you can continue watching. But if you want to join in with the chat, come and join us at Behance. Uh, so be.net slash Adobe Live. And you'll be able to see the... Um, all the comments and the chat and I encourage you to get involved and um, add to the conversation. If you're new here, uh, it'd be great to have you um, just, you know, saying hey, dropping an emoji if you like, uh, or if you're one of the regular viewers and we've got plenty of regular people in the chat. Uh, we've got Caroline Kirsty, uh, Emma is here, um, Alexandre and Sean and Linda and Gareth and all sorts of other people in the chat. So welcome everyone and um, Pauline, what are we going through today? Ooh la la. Uh, so I have actually prepared a few things, but I think I would be curious to to know what you also want to see. Like when we we if we talk like more and more, what would be would you be interested to to see and where we can go? So I have a few Photoshop files, I have a few video files, maybe. It's really up to you. I have plenty of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> So here it is. So we are on my Instagram page, so you can see a bit more about my my work. Um, Your work, by the way, has such a vibe about it. It's just very moody and just makes you stop and just look and, and think like, what is going on here? What am I looking at? And then you just feel all sorts of, I don't know, feelings and emotions towards it. There's like dark vibes, but very technically um, interesting uh, creative work. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to jumping through this, definitely. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks. Yeah. I, and I also think my work does not really look like me and doesn't really reflect who I am. <laughs> like as an everyday person. And it's okay. Sometimes, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was always attracted towards the more darker stuff. It mm -hmm. was more what I enjoy, even since, you know, as a kid or as an angry teenager, being a ghost teenager. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's nice to do something. Some Sometimes beauty is not where you think it is, you know. It can be very painful or sad, or but there is still mm -hmm. some beauty to see in there. So this is what's interesting, yeah. what's interesting to me. That's interesting you mentioned it's like a like an alter ego almost. It's just a complete separate character. It probably makes it easier to separate work and play and you can sort of have your day to day and then yeah, you can also yeah. get into a, a creative flow of things. Um, yeah, possibly. sure. I don't know. I think there's a part of, there's a, probably a part like this in every, every one of us. I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but being able to express it probably makes mm. me more like healthy and sane. Yep. <laughs> if you get every, everything inside and you just pretend your life is so perfect and so beautiful oh. <laughs> that's true you're not letting it eat you alive definitely yeah so um, everything is a is a balance balance is tough huh? 
Yeah, I mean, this is honestly just so incredible. Um, all of this work, and I love the ones with the with the shape and the um, you've got people coming out of them. There's a few that you've got posted, and yeah, I think that I just the graphic why. element of them just works really well. So I think so. Maybe I studied graphic design, and I. I worked yeah, as likewise. a designer for a few years, so I think it kind of reflects also mm -hmm. my work. Um, it's not just about like photography or doing editing or doing... For me, it's everything visual. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's typography or design mm -hmm. or architecture, you know, it could be... Creation is anything. I love everything visual. So, mm -hmm. yeah, probably those like very kind of like square element are very influenced by, by design mm -hmm. and my design background. And does a lot of your work start with storyboarding and sketching of things? Or like, how do you get involved to just decide what the oh, yeah, piece is going to be? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I always do like a tons, tons. Oh, I don't have it here, but I always have everywhere. I have like a notebook. This one is a different one. But yeah, there's probably always, always Drawings everywhere, like crappy drawings, just drawings, you know. Um, I don't know if I have some here, but uh, yeah, and you know, it's really hard. I don't, I feel like I have a lot, tons of ideas, mm -hmm. but there is a moment when you have to make them happen in real life. Yeah. And this is when it's, it's super tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh... I remember. Yeah. There's a mention in here from Emma saying that you're oh, yeah. also super creative with uh, shooting and making your own set. So oh, yeah, yeah. you, you oh. work on set design as well. That's incredible. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's not really set design. It's more like you have something in mind and you just have to find a way to, to make it real. So, mm. so here to answer your question just before I have some. So this one, one of the sketches that I did. And I probably had this idea of my, in mind for like five years. Mm. But five years ago, I was not able to do it technically. Like this right. kind of like the oh, face cool. getting sucked inside. And so sometimes uh, you find the idea is so, I don't know, so powerful. Or you, you don't forget about it. So you just wait till you have mm -hmm. enough skills to make it happen. Yeah. So this was a bit no, It's good to, to hold on to those ideas, definitely. Um, and sometimes ideas, they, they hit you at the weirdest time. And, you know, you may have forgotten about this if you'd never actually sketched it out or, or done anything like that. So yeah, it's good sure. that you like, did. <laughs> I don't know if you sketch, but so last year I started to have this big idea of a project and I just left it apart for a while. And last week I, I sketched some stuff and it was exactly the same as what a sketch is. Sketch. Ah, why is it so hard to say <laughs> what I was drawing that just a year ago? And I just forgot about it. And when I see it, I'm like, this is shit. This is the same idea. Mm. It's been one year. I need to make it now. I. Yeah. It's a good way to to know that your idea is good enough that you really really yeah. want to make in real life. Because sometimes you know you have plenty of not so good and you just forget about them. Mm. So Where does your stick, yeah. inspiration come from for this? Because it's quite theatrical looking. I don't know if it's any sort of like motion work that inspires you or music. Mm, I think I'm super inspired by... Um, I love music, definitely. When I look for ideas, you know, I'm a bit of insomniac. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, at night you put some music I love like Nine Inch Nails, this kind of dark stuff. It okay. put me yep. into like this kind of mood and your mind just wander and you get all these ideas. Mm. Uh, I also can show you a few like artist I, uh, inspiration. I love like, um, do you know Gottfried Enheim? I, I never know how to write it, but yeah. like this guy is doing like this massive hyper-realistic painting of kids okay yeah yeah like this kind of stuff as i don't know i found it super interesting i also mm. love like big scenes key i don't know if you know. like this guy he i really recommend you like checking into his work he did like paintings like hundreds of them and he was just a regular dude <laughs> yeah just like making this painting for 
all day long. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's super, super yeah. inspiring. And they a are wild like, imagination. Oh, this is probably not him, just to get inspired when, yeah. So wow. yeah, this kind of art I find super inspiring. Yeah. Here it is. Cool. And so yeah, I'd, I uh, I'd love to see. Sets. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. Let's uh let's see how uh, how things oh, come exactly. together and yeah, so I can show you a few making of if you want to. Mm -hmm. So for example, do you remember this like square picture? Wait, where it is? Yeah, I I don't know. So I had this idea in mind for a long time as well. I did the drawing and everything, and I really wanted to put a girl in the in a square of light. And some mm -hmm. things you can Photoshop, but I think light is really important to have it real. You're a photographer, yep. so you know what yep. I mean. And I wanted to have this feeling of the girl. She just she's litten by the square in a way, so it had to okay. be like a square actively of light. lit. Yeah. Yeah, so I went to a friend, he's like walking as light. Um, oh, wow. Take light. And I. it took me months to find this because I was like on a budget. You know, you don't want to spend mm -hmm. 200 euros just for one picture. Yeah. And these are like actually Christmas light. Wow. <laughs> so these what? are LED Christmas light. Okay. <laughs> that someone gave, gave me because I... That I would be a... Like, very geometric Christmas tree to uh, light with such yeah. a straight bulb. So <laughs> it was be it was belonging to uh, a, a theater. Do you say this? Yeah, a theater. Mm -hmm. So, and it was like hanging from the from the ceiling, and no ah, one was using them for years. Yeah. So it was like so many of them. So I got them free. It was cool. Friend gave them to me, and so you really have this feeling of the light is really yeah weird. nice. And then, of course, you get the natural reflection on the skin tones and yeah, you don't have to exactly. adjust it too much in post. Yeah. So it, it was quite simple. Just uh, just the square, the light. Uh, it was a hand painting, painted backdrop on the floor. Mm -hmm. I borrowed, stole the <laughs> stair, the, the stair from my, my neighbor and it was it. Yeah. It's always great seeing the behind the scenes on things because when you see a, a finished image and it's all polished and I guess this is where the, the software comes in to really, you know, yeah. pull it all together. Um, it sometimes looks a little bit intimidating of how would I go and do that? And then you see the behind the scenes and it looks very achievable. And you think, oh, I, I could do that. I could find some tube lights and a step ladder and, you know, just go yeah, to the sure. DIY store and you've got everything you need. Yeah, I think so. What I think about like photography, imagery, like anything you create, it's more important to have like a strong concept and a strong idea and a strong mm -hmm. vision. And then you find a way. It's all right. It's, yeah. You just MacGyver, MacGyver it and it's okay. If you focus on being very, very technical, sometimes you make something pretty, but it's also a bit empty. So yeah. I think it's important to do like the opposite. Yeah, and absolutely. I actually have the PSD file, so I can't even show you like the before picture. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I think my computer is a bit slow, but if you have any question in the meantime, don't hesitate. I'm wondering, my first thing that I'm going to be interested in is the perspective, if you had to correct any sort of thing. Because I always find when you're doing top-down shots, especially off a ladder or where it's not a fixed oh, yeah, position. Yeah, just like this, and you don't want to fall over or yeah. over your model, especially in making models. <laughs> 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 it would be super cool. So I think that... so. There's not so much done in the picture, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you think, but Just most of, of it was... A bit of a rotate and a bit of a... Yeah. yeah. And okay. can you see like the quality of light that I was talking mm -hmm. about? So you can really see it already there. So after it's yeah, like the, cleaning the background. But... I think the definition on the calf especially, if you were doing that um, like just digitally, you probably yeah. wouldn't have added in that little bit of light there. Yeah. So nice. Just a bit of rotation, warp perspective and cleaning the background. Things like this always look like album covers or uh, like a t-shirt design. 
<laughs> this is really cool that you say this to me because I love working for musicians. Oh, okay. So this, you've uh, done that quite a bit then. Yeah, I love doing. I love to do this. I, I find it super interesting that musicians are like super passionate and they put all their life and energy into creating like music. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you know some musicians, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And the irony of this is the first thing people are going to see is the album cover. Mm -hmm. So you, as a designer, I think we have such a responsibility to, to help those people or to create an universe, like some visuals that are super appealing for the people so they can get to the music and to the work like they're putting in, in it. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think the the sort of marriage between visual arts and music is just so strongly knit because neither like you can't look at a a piece of art and hear it, but likewise you can't hear music and see it. So mm. the the combination of the two together um, is such a strong bond, uh, and I think that's yeah, why we sure. we so often see things and just immediately think like, oh, album artwork is because it's been represented so well in the past. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think musicians are, are really interesting to work with this year. If you're a designer and if, even if you want like to expand your portfolio and do mm -hmm. more things like you can contact some designers. Oh, it was yeah. uh, this one was not used at the end. Yeah. Oh, was that so, different yeah. options you had there? Yeah, yeah. I think I tried to put some stars, but I think it was probably too much. Yeah, I didn't. Keep okay. It. But yeah, I don't know what you think, but that's not too much editing on this. Mm -hmm. What was the, the reasoning for going black and white? Um, that's a good question. I have a... I mean, to be honest, I prefer the black and white. I think it, yeah, yeah. it just simplifies it. Yeah, exactly. I think it, it goes more into being like something more design and less photography, probably. Mm. Yeah. And you also, I think as a designer, we also talk, talked, oh, some words are hard to say, <laughs> <laughs> to like be careful about the color because they hold a meaning. So yep. if you use color, you do it to just know why you do it. Like, I have to hmm. rationalize why, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's probably also about this. So Great. I have some more. Oh, if you have some questions, don't hesitate to, to stop me. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's, uh, I think um, some people are just a, a little bit in awe of, uh, of your work. Um, I've got some messages of just, this is so cool. So interesting to see behind the scenes. And I think it's just, oh, I think it's, it's so definitely much. relatable because especially no matter what level of creativity or, um, you know, skill you're at, it's always going to look like this, a messy bunch of cables. And, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's how it is. Sometimes you work with what you got. Yes, yeah, sometimes. So I have a cool story. This is like when I started, I planned mm -hmm. this shoot and I wanted to do something like, so I had like a proper model. I wanted to put her in um, vegetation. I can probably find you the picture. It's, it's, it's a bit earlier on my Instagram, but it's still here. Yes, yeah, so this, it was this shoot. Okay. Uh, it was a collaboration. So another friend of mine just drew on the picture. And just like five minutes before we start shooting, my speed light decided to die. I had oh, like no. the cheap, cheap Chinese one with a yeah. with a trigger, and it's just like it's not working. So <laughs> you know, so I just found some LED light. You know the one you change the color with a small remote. Yep. The five euro one that you get at the, you know the random place and I just like <laughs> tap them on the crappy piece of cardboard I just tap like a ruler behind so we can hold it like this in front of the model <laughs> <laughs> and we had our light on the shoot and honestly I think the it was probably much better like this at, than wind with the real speed light mm. so some lights sometimes we want like the perfect especially photographers you know we think we need the gear to have the better yeah we really need it. Like, oh, I want this new lens. Oh, I want that. Yeah. No, what you need is like more ideas and more concepts. And more gaffer tape. <laughs> exactly. More gaffer tape. Always <laughs> gaffer tape. 
So, so you mentioned the illustration was done from a friend of yours. You've got yeah. quite a few illustrative pieces uh, in your portfolio. Is, is that always collaboration or do you do illustration as well? So I think when I... So I think it's a complicated... It's a simple question, but complicated <laughs> I think because I was a designer, I was always attracted to like all all the design aspects, you know. This is mm. why I love doing the Adobe Live because I get to meet the illustrator, the director, yeah. like everyone, the designer, like we talk about fonts and I just love all of this. And to be honest, I was working as a designer and then I got, I didn't want to work in agency anymore. So I decided like, okay, I want to be a photographer. But after a few years, I started to miss this other aspect mm. so i have i have a few friends that did illustration on top of my so this is another one another one of my friends great designer also but i think no i want to do more of this myself i right. think I, I i had a bit of an important imposter syndrome you know this one mm -hmm. but I also want to do more videos and I try to add some videos aspect in my work now and honestly I don't really know if I can call myself a photographer anymore I haven't touched the camera for so long but I've been doing so many things I've been like drawing do like music videos or I want to learn more but it's a process you know mm -hmm. I think so it's, it's a bit of existential crisis of the creative, yeah. of a creative person, you know, sometimes you learn, you master something, but then I kind of felt stuck in these dark images and I want to grow out of it. So you have to get back into being very vulnerable, learn some skills that you never tried before and yeah. explore new medium. Yeah, so, definitely. I think uh, vulnerability in, in creativity is it's such a powerful thing. It's opening yourself up to say, I can make whatever I want to make. And, you know, you just put yourself out and try not to let the response dictate where your direction is going on things. Um, and yeah, being so vulnerable is, is so powerful, but yeah, yeah sure. it is difficult. Mm. There and was actually when... a question early oh, on yeah, sure. um, about how you might deal with creative uh, blockage and to add into that dealing with imposter syndrome is that something that you've okay been how able much to overcome? Time do have? <laughs> 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 oh gosh i think this is like everyone has this and i don't know any artist that doesn't feel like this so mm. even when we talk with the adobe guests like everyone at either level everyone has dubs and you don't know what your was or it's so maybe we can just accept it of like it's okay it's part of the artist yep. life and i don't know i'm i'm pretty much in the middle of this because i want to do more videos but i feel like i'm not good enough and you know so i understand this i think i just it's just accepting that it's okay. Sometimes not everything you do does not have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Yep. Everything's a work in progress. I on this. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, it's okay. And it's a matter of finding joy. And I think at some point doing this kind of visual, I did not find joy in them anymore. So this is why I tried like to do something else. So I can give you an example. At the moment, I I never draw before in my life, like a bit in mm -hmm. art school, but I was always finding a way to take picture for the projects. Yeah. And now I'm going like to nude class drawing. Nice. Because it's like think... something else. You know, you don't have to pressure yourself of posting it on Instagram and you just... Yeah. Yeah. Life drawing was uh, probably one of my favorite topics in college um yeah i did it for i think it's maybe one session a week for two years oh, and that's cool. i just enjoyed it it was so i understood about 
a month into it of why it was part of our graphic design course because it just teaches you so much about composition and emotion and just yep. communicating what you want to see or rather what you want other people to see based on either what you can see or what you want to visualize and like just so much aspect to it um, yeah, sure. and it's really therapeutic you kind of you know you zone out you de-stress from things yeah um yeah, it's a very enjoyable thing. So if anyone's watching and, and has not tried life drawing, um, yeah, go look it up draw and naked give it a go. people. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, and it, I think naked drawing you get really like kind of good at it when you accept to let go, and mm -hmm. that you don't want to draw something perfect. And this is probably the biggest lesson that I'm getting out of it. It's like yeah. learning to just like, and at yeah. the end it's, it looks really cool or not, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to transitioning into digital stuff, uh, I saw you had some other PSDs. Um, oh yeah, sure. It'd be great if we could see how some of your sort of more compositional things that have been digitally pieced together, uh, kind of yeah, deconstruct sure. those and see. Um... So I have this one that's really, really big. So when you actually, whilst we're waiting for this to load, whilst you're doing life drawing, what's your preferred uh, media to use? Oh, so because I'm taking co uh, lessons at the moment, it's like every week it's a different medium. So they're right, like, okay. today it's a Indian ink or next week is a dry pastel. So you don't really have to, to choose, but it's mm -hmm. nice because it, it's a good challenge somehow. Yeah. But yeah, I really recommend it. And you know, the funny things about life drawing is like, when I was in art school, it was 15 years ago already. <laughs> I was really like, not good at drawing. I was not at the top of my class. I was really good at design and photography and all this stuff, but I did not have a special talent at drawing. But after mm -hmm. all this experience of like, just learning to look and to understand the light and the color and everything, I know that quite not bad, honestly. Yeah. I think one of the biggest lessons I learned with uh, drawing is you so often, you know what is around the other side of someone's head, for example, and you start drawing yeah. it. But then you look at it and, you know, your maybe instructor is kind of saying like, well, can you actually see that? And you're like, no, I can't. And like, well, so why have you drawn it? And that is just such a really grounding question. You realize, ah, oh, I need to separate myself from what I think you can see and what you actually can see. Yeah, and this is such a great tip. I, I think you think you know, but you don't know. And this mm -hmm. is learning to look differently, I think. And yeah. And also, when you start to master something, just like I, I do think I master like this kind of editing, the crazy stuff. And you, you lose a bit of the fun, you know, the accident and everything starts to be very controlled. So getting mm -hmm. back into doing something you don't know is also a good opportunity to be creative. So yeah. this is, I think this is important also. And this so, piece here is so creative. This is this incredible. Before. So this is a before. Wow. That's so cool. Um, and how many hours hours of work went into producing this? <laughs> yeah, so this one I told you it was, I think it was around 18, 18 hours of Photoshop. Just Photoshop alone, okay. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. in terms of setting up the shot and doing the makeup and everything like that, is that a full Ooh, yeah. so afternoon's I, worth or? I don't think, yeah, it's always like, uh, my photo shoots are always a full afternoon. Because mm -hmm. it's hard to get into this kind of zone, you know, to have the model really like ah, yeah. opening up and be comfortable and trust you with your vision. Like you can't get this after 10 minutes on the set. It's mm -hmm. just not possible. So, for example, I think the clay really adds something. So I don't have the making of for this, but I have another one. So this was... This has a different texture, but so you can get some clay and it will, it will add something to the skin. It's just not the normal clean skin. Yeah. 
it, so you start your editing with something. So it's not just perfect. You see what I mean? Yeah. It would be really, really hard to get to an edit like this with a clean skin. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's easier to have something and then add on instead of like there's nothing and I have to invent it. Yeah. And one thing that I'm wondering first off with this is you'd obviously taken a lot of images, but to then spend 18 hours editing one, how do you make sure that you've chosen the right image to start with? Do you ever get so far and then think, oh, I should have chosen a different one, then you change your mind? Mm, that's a good idea. Uh, so I always do like a quick editing, like a quick drawing on the, mm -hmm. on the editing. Uh, I don't know if I have it here. I don't think so. But There's also yeah, some uh, uh, questions in the chat of uh, going through the layers, but i um, just going to say, I think we will go through that in a moment. The, I, the layers are a bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if I have like an images like this, I will take like a normal brush, sometimes in red, and I will just like start to do something like this very quickly just to understand the composition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you're almost adding sometimes... notes over your work. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes I just like get rid of some parts. Um, oh, my computer is a bit slow. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm not deleting the proper layer. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I just do something like this. Okay. And you, in just two minutes, you understand if the image is going to work or not. Like it's about finding the good composition, the good idea. And then you decide to commit and spend the time. But honestly, I don't do it so much anymore. Like, oh, it's time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. So I also have like so many, like so hundreds of lost pictures that I never finished. That mm. are in the state of a sketch. Yeah. Which is sad. And was so, this yeah. shot in, it looked like it was in a, a house or an apartment, not even like a actual studio. Is this set up with oh, your own yeah. backdrop and oh, living yeah, room? Oh, sure. yeah, I do everything home studio. No, Amazing. I, I think I, I never worked in a proper studio. I, and there's also a reason for this. I think it's important for the model. It makes them feel more comfortable. That's Especially interesting, yeah. You have a, like a different connection. You know, you invite them in your space and you have some tea, you talk about some stuff. And then it's part of the process of getting people vulnerable and mm. naked in front of your camera and just not naked the body but just naked everything you know yeah yeah interesting i guess it doesn't feel as uh like clinical as a an actual studio yeah, sure. yeah. yeah so you know when you have the studio with a proper like some people they freak out you know it's a, mm. it's a bit like super cold and do you feel like you can be messier in your own home you know, you're not so worried about throwing clay everywhere. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, you're more worried about it. I don't know. <laughs> so what layers are we looking at here? You Are these different photos that are then masked and put in? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I just took some different images and I just stitched them together. Okay. And so what's happening? Are they images of the same person from earlier yeah, images it's the same yeah. so it's the same photo shoot so you keep like a consistency in light and the even like the grain and everything i think it's important mm -hmm. and also if you want to do like photo manipulation and add some more images from the same shoot i recommend for you not to like turn them because you want to keep okay. the light consistent and if you turn the image and the light doesn't make sense anymore right so you no, want to get it can... as good in camera as possible. Yeah, exactly. So you keep the same size, you keep the same light. And this yeah. is how you make your editing look really good because it was properly done in camera. Yeah. Paying and... attention to physics. I like it. <laughs> so are these layers, have they been edited separately and then kind of merged down or smart objects or... Because oh, it looks I... like there is some, some slight editing compared to the original that we've got going on. Yeah, I think so. I, I can't really remember. I think I was really in the flow. I can tell like this one. I also have some texture of the beach, like sand texture that I photographed some. Oh, interesting. I added, you know. Yeah. 
Sounds and then you just good. mask it off with a brush and yeah yeah it's so as you can see my work is only it's mostly like masking stuff mm -hmm. yeah it's nothing too crazy you know so um, yeah it, it again it makes time, it though. seem very achievable it just it yeah, comes sure. down to having a strong idea to start with oh we and... found the we found the sketch <laughs> 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 so yeah this was like the sketch <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I would have never have known that that was uh, just beach sand, but it makes perfect sense. It, you know, it's it's a granular texture and blows in nicely. Yeah, you wanted to make it realistic, so I, I think I've added a few layers like this should not be here, but at least you can understand. So mm -hmm. if you're like me and you have tons of layers, the automatic selection is your best friend. <laughs> yeah. So you press the V for the for the, as a shortcut, and then you select like selection, automatic selection on the top, the top left here, and you select layer. And so you don't have like to like it doesn't. It will help you. F you just have to click on the on the part of your image to find the layer. Yeah, be a little bit more yeah efficient yeah. and quicker. Uh, yeah. Likewise, you can also hold command and just click uh, and it will select the layer. But unless you've got like a, a big mask over, it will likely still select the whole thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is so cool. Yeah. I'd love so to see I... this in uh, in motion, but I know that that would be a mammoth task and likely using very different skill sets and, uh, and things. Actually, someone did it. Really? I, I don't yeah yeah I actually someone sent me a message and so i sent them the full layers and they did something i don't know if i could find it right now but yeah it's cool also when you have this kind of people that can help you mm. so i always say photoshop is a bit like makeup mm -hmm. it's not like one big lipstick and one eyeliner it's a tiny bit of everything yeah. And at the end, you look perfectly natural. <laughs> yeah. So it's more like a lot of small things. Yeah. Like it's like cooking. cooking. Yeah. Just little, little yeah, exactly. touches of cooking. flavor. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a tiny bit of like, you know, pieces. You give, you add dimensions. Sometimes mm -hmm. you change your light. But just take it slowly. Like one layer. Some people, they want this result with the, just like one layer. Just yeah. tell me how you did this lighting or something. But it's just mm. piece by piece. There's actually uh, a question here on when you post to social networks uh, like Facebook and Instagram, uh, do your posts ever get removed because of nudity? And how do you get around the, the concept of saying, you know, this is art? Um, <laughs> That's a good question. So I think I was shadow banned from Instagram for two years. Right. <laughs> Not anymore because I have like, so for two years I had no new followers mm -hmm. except from the people that were like knowing me personally. I think I was really shadow banned probably because of this image or something else. I honestly, I don't really know and I don't really care in a sense like, I mean, if some people think this kind of nudity is a bit like erotic or something. It's really messed up. Like, come on, guys, this is art. <laughs> this is someone like exploding. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is messed up. Like, how are you going to censor something like this? It doesn't make just any sense to me. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? I think my work is just so far from being remotely I... like at attractive in a like sensual way. Yeah. No. No. In this instance, it's very um, abstracted from from other styles, but yeah. Yeah. No. It's a it's a good point because um, some social networks can be uh, you know very conservative on on a lot of things because they have a lot of users and and audience. Uh, but then somewhere like Behance is great because you know it's clearly <laughs> all about yeah. art. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a really good tip actually. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm. I was never like a big Instagrammer 
I think some people really have a style that can do well on Instagram, mm -hmm. but I don't think this is my case, but I'm okay with this. Like, it's all right. Yeah. It's a message, message in here. Uh, Oliver said, I once had a photo on Tumblr, <laughs> Tumblr flagged for nudity. It was a picture of a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a very, uh, a very friendly looking mushroom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have um, more Photoshop if you want to see. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Love it. I this. also like, I started to try to teach myself to do a bit more videos in Photoshop. So this is okay. the Photoshop as well. We can open this. I don't really master this, so I can't really properly teach you how to do it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's a bit up to you. You tell me what you want to see. Oh, and I wanted to show you something also maybe before. So because okay. yeah, go for it. So one of the perks of having like crazy layers, I just open them in Ari Ari ah, Aero. Aero. Adobe Aero, uh, you know, so yep, augmented Aero, reality. Yep. Yeah, so the augmented reality uh, application. Wow. And that was pretty cool. I just got so rid you of just the like. Walk through your layers. Layer. Yeah, exactly. So if you're a messy person, it's still okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this lends itself very well because there's so many layers of texture and you're just adding moving texture. Uh, so yeah. for those of you who don't know, Adobe Aero is a. AR uh, augmented reality app and you open up a PSD file and then you kind of use your camera on your phone or your tablet um, set a, a space and then you can just walk through your layers and you can see everything yep. and this is the captured video from it very cool so this is super cool but you have to optimize your your file because it will it will never work so you just do like file export and export to Aero. Mm -hmm. And then it will optimize the size for you. Because if you don't, it will be just too heavy for for the app to process everything. Right. And I just got rid of the layers that were like not transparent enough. Yeah. To to have the yeah. file. But yeah, it was just fun to to be able to to go into the, the art. <laughs> There's a message here. So an error, you don't need to properly rename your layers. Nope. <laughs> nope. Even if you go on error doesn't like... judge. <laughs> It's fun because as a host, every guest we have on Adobe Live, they're like, oh, so sorry, my layers are a mess. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Just like everyone else. <laughs> I won't judge publicly. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's nice to rename your layers if you're working with other people. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you're just by yourself, it's okay. And so it's yeah. interesting that there isn't actually a... Uh, a native keyboard shortcut for rename layers, but it's one of the first key bindings that I create in Photoshop. So I've set mine oh. to Command Option L, which okay. I think replaces uh, as a standard shortcut. It's something like add levels to currently or apply previous levels adjustment to current layer or something. It's a shortcut okay. that I never use. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, I changed it to rename layer. So now that when I'm going through, I can just do Command Option L, type in a layer name. So much quicker yeah, sure. than double clicking and, and anything like that. Um, yeah, you you also have the option now to, which I find so interesting. Oops, sorry, my Zoom window is on the way. Uh, ah, you have I think which one it is? Layer, layer composition. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose it's the same name in English, which is super interesting to get back into like. So now I use it more and more. Uh, yep. So you can decide it just show some layers and hide some layers. But instead of doing it manually, it just remember. So you can do this one was the image like with nothing. This one with the image with a, just the light. So I really yep. recommend for you like using. Yeah, it. layer comps are layer Photoshop's comps. secret weapon. So, so good. I use it all the time for exporting out like hundreds of different design assets. You got different options of like logo A on the left or logo B yeah, on the right. Exactly. Yeah. Blue text, white text, all these different things. Yeah. I think this is the best use. When you're looking for something you're still like exploring, you don't know, you just can like mm -hmm. remember like with yeah. Photoshop. Oh, that's cool. And a hot tip with that as well is if you name your layer comps with the eventual file name, so you put in underscores and dashes and things, 
when you do file export to layer comp or export layer comps to files, you can then just have a batch creation of all your files ready and waiting. And if you change anything and re-export it, it just overwrites it and you've always got the constant of uh, how things should look. Okay. It's brilliant. It's the most underused really cool. feature of Photoshop, I think. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so I opened ah, so this one. Video. I think my computer is going to die, but we can try. <laughs> okay, we'll give it a go. We're streaming, yeah. we're video conferencing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, so this was like the second step I did this before. So I did the editing of the picture before and after I I did uh, the video. But uh, yeah, if you have any question, give me the moment. There's a there's a lot of chat about layer names here. Um, <laughs> so people are just saying uh, you don't need to rename your layers, just hide the layers panel. There we go. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. Um, yeah, exactly. Another another great tip here of uh, when you're renaming layers, so when you're in the current state of naming uh, and you finish, just press tab and it will go to the next layer. Uh, it goes to the next visible layer, I believe, rather than the next actual layer. Um, okay. And then you can just quickly batch rename a load of stuff. And uh, that's just reminding me of another tip that is uh, a great thing in layers is the search functionality, which again is is kind of hidden. A lot of people don't know about this, but if you name your layers and you start using like a bit of a keywording system, oh, yeah, so you may yeah. have, yeah, yeah. there yeah, we yeah. go. So you could give your layers something like by name, by, yep. Yeah. Some sort of coding system and uh, yeah. search for them, adjust them all at once. It's brilliant. Yeah, sure. I like. It's funny how we know all this stuff, but when you're just in the flow creating, there's nothing about it. <laughs> yep. You're just like, I don't know about you, but... Definitely. Um, so for this image, it was just simple image and simple editing. So this is a before after. Um, Self-portrait, <laughs> because why not? Because when you don't have a model with you and you really want to do something and it's like 2, a 2 a.m., yeah. You photograph yourself. So simple editing, as you can see, I just like painted some black here because I didn't like this mm -hmm. part and it was like too long to Photoshop it. I think also you can, so a lot of editing, I think you can achieve with light. So with dodge and burn, I don't know if yep. you know this technique, but it's basically painting with like a lighter curve and a darker um, curve uh, and a mask and just with this you don't have to have like crazy frequency separation skills or mm -hmm. all this kind of like crazy photoshop stuff it can be just simple and you have a really kind of natural you know i like these techniques because you keep like the texture of the skin yeah it's definitely yeah, so I like it because it's super natural. So I really recommend it if you if you want to learn more about it. I really recommend checking like Dodge and Burn. And also you put a black and white layer on on not on top, the bottom of the mm -hmm. of the layer. So you don't get uh, annoyed by the color. Everything you yep. see is just purely light. Yeah, exactly. So you just paint light or paint shadow and you give more dimension. You give it gets this like 3D effects on your mm -hmm. image and I, I really like it. So nothing fancy, it's just knowing what to do. Yeah, it's uh, just, again, simple physics, but it's the simple ways are the best ways, definitely. Yeah, and then I just played around with the color and went for something a bit a bit blue. I don't know why, I just wanted So how are, how are you doing these colors here? Is that a, I see a hue saturation layer and then have you got a color balance layer, is that? Yeah, so got? there's curves, there's um, curves, curves, um, I don't know the name of this one in English. You know this one. Oh, gradient map. Gradient map, exactly, thanks. Yep. And I also have a plugin. I use a Exposure, Alien Skin. But okay. yeah, I've used I used it a lot, but I don't use it so much anymore. But it, it gives you like a good base and some ideas. I really enjoy it because they have like the proper... Um, you can choose, for example, so if I launch it... Um, 
extension. Oh, I don't know. Is it here? You know, I don't use it <laughs> at all. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, but it Maybe has it's installed like the... on the previous version. Yeah, probably. So it, it really has this like film feeling. So you can okay. choose your like uh, D, Max, Kodak, something, Polapan, or. Yeah. And it really works this. So I think it was interesting. But oh, cool. honestly, I, I know I just do my own thing and it's better. Do you do any editing in Lightroom at all? Or is it always in Photoshop? I use Lightroom. So especially when I was working as a photographer and you have like 500 pictures to edit. And so you do like a big, big batch of them. And mm -hmm. but for like just a like specific edit of like one image you wanted to make like a piece of art, it would be more Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But if you have a wedding, like, of course, you're going to do, like, everything in Lightroom. Yeah. So, animation, you can do animation in Photoshop. How cool is that? Yeah. So this is, uh, you've sketched this in Photoshop as well, right? These, oh, they're yeah, from exactly. an image. I did. So, yeah, I just, like, found a stock video of like a flower that I liked, mm -hmm. I hope. I think it's going to take some time to... It may not render yet. Yeah, to render, but... And it's just like rotoscoping. So rotoscoping is you just draw on top of a video. So you don't have mm -hmm. to have like drawing skills. It's just the video that's at the bottom and that's it. So it was just... It takes some time. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> it takes some time because you have to draw so many images. But mm. at the same time, it's also very like easy and you don't have to think about it. The process. I've heard from uh, from a lot of animators, this is what you're quite often tasked with in your early days of working in an animation studio. The the sort of senior designers, they don't want to do the rotoscoping. That's, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> but... Hand it off to the young ones. Exactly. But for some someone like me, I have very like little knowledge of animation and I if you don't really know how to do it and you want to add something cool to your picture you can just find like a cool video you add it on top of your image you draw over it and it's okay you have a cool mm -hmm. animation it's just takes some time to do but it does not take so much like brain to do <laughs> yep do you know what um frames per second what frame rate you're using for the video because that's one thing that lends itself well to this style is having it not as fluid so yeah. is this like Honestly, 12 or 15 maybe i have no idea and this is one of the struggles that i still have with photoshop i still it's hard to figure out which frame rate i want to have right so this is more of the things that i'm still like working on and experimenting with and i think i am at like my frames are so you can decide how long your drawing are um, lasting on the animation mm -hmm. so each frame is here so i think every drawing is two frames so okay i'm, so yeah, I'm, prob probably, I'm probably around like 12 frames per second something like that yeah nice yeah. have you tried anything in after effects at all <laughs> So to be honest, I studied motion design uh -huh. and it was a long time ago and we still struggle to be friends like After Effects is such a pain in the ass. What it do you it is intimidating, yeah. But, um... Tell me what you think in the chat. I'm curious to know. Like, I'm trying. So, so every now and then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to do like a video challenge and do some After Effects because I want to be better at it. And just something like this takes me like five hours crying three times and <laughs> do you see what I mean yeah but then the more you do it the either the faster you get or the more ambitious you get so yeah, exactly. they either they'll probably always take five hours you'll just get a much more yeah. sort of involved uh piece yeah I think also for me photoshop is just so nice and natural and i don't have to think about it and everything is like in a flow state mm -hmm. and after effects sometimes there's li this little like things that's not working and you just have no idea why 
I'm sorry, I'm not selling After Effects very well. <laughs> it's really cool. You can do no, plenty of stuff, but gosh, this it, is so hard to learn. It's a common, common response. I mean, I personally, I struggle to get involved with After Effects. Uh, this was about four years ago now. Um, and then Ooh. when I eventually did get into doing some After Effects, I was like, oh, this is this is brilliant. This is doing all of the things I want. And then a few things that I just didn't understand. Um, and then I'd leave it for about six months or so, come back. And somehow I would have solved whatever that thing was I struggled with and then move on to the next one. So you can pick it up very quickly. Yeah, um, that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I really enjoy the... So one of the things, if you want to be good at something, I think you have to also enjoy the process of making it. Yeah, and definitely. I do think I really love the results of like creating videos, but I don't really enjoy the process of doing it. Mm. <laughs> interesting. So, yeah, sometimes you can spend like, you know, 15 hours on the editing, but mm -hmm. the same 15 hours on the video will feel like excruciating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember but the I'm days fine. of um, working in Adobe Flash and uh, when I first got into building websites, I was making them in Flash. And it was one of those things where I I could build it and I could work on it. And it, it's a bit of an abstractive way of making a navigation because you're essentially working on a video timeline and the buttons take you to certain parts of the timeline as yeah. what a website would be. But every time I came to update the website, I forgot how it was built. So I'd have to rebuild the whole thing. And it was just <sighs> such a, a long process. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, Flash wasn't really the... It was great for what was available at the time, but um, the the long run of it, it, I struggled with it so much. Yeah, I understand. Rest in peace, Flash. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I've been doing, for example, uh, I opened this because I did a music video and okay. there was this like, sometimes there are some like effects and it was such a struggle to make. And honestly, I'm super grateful that I had some of our Adobe guests to help me achieve them. Mm -hmm. And even like this, it was just so hard, but at the end, you know, I think some are good. So I can... Yeah, this looks great. Where was the shot? Um, it was shot in France during the second lockdown in south of France in November, okay. I think. Yeah, it was nice. There was no one around. And and yeah, it was one of my process of like, okay, I want to do music video. I'm going to teach myself how to make video. And then everything is so hard. <laughs> video yeah. is tough. So like this shot, for example, oh, it took me more time than I can admit it. It probably yeah. like it would be two minutes and ten seconds in Photoshop, and it probably took me like three days. <laughs> <laughs> that's again, that is the the best way to learn and explore, and we've definitely seen that um, throughout this stream. We've gone through a whole host of of different work and uh, kind of the the inside thought to the outside piece. And it, I think, just going back to one of the early things you said of how your work doesn't actually reflect who you are in person like you know you're not a dark and moody person and you know grungy and whatever it's a complete opposite um which i think is just so interesting like people would probably never put two and two together if they saw you out in a cafe oh, with an know. ipad sketching oh, yeah, things yeah. and they'd look over and like oh, okay didn't expect to see oh, that yeah, but all, all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it happens to me all the time yeah yeah so after effect yeah this moonshot was also in i had another idea but i was never able to make it so i was like yeah maybe it could be the moon and then it was easy to make so sometimes it's a balance of being technical and having ideas and sometimes you don't know how to do the technical so you either find someone to help you mm -hmm. get there or you make a compromise or you wait a few in the time and yeah till you good enough well, no, okay. you get there you get there eventually um yeah. i think it's that's where we you know collectively would call yourself just a creative like i prefer for myself just the term independent creative not really just a photographer not just a f filmmaker designer whatever it's I like to dabble in all things um i think that's the the best place to uh to yeah, find ourselves yeah you're, you're right it's not about like it's not about just taking pictures or just making videos. It's about like creating something and having fun with making it also is good. 
absolutely. So I think this uh, this rounds out today's stream uh, pretty well. We've gone through a whole host of different things. Just a little point on next week, uh, or rather the next two weeks. Uh, so of course, normally we're here Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, but for the next two weeks, you are on your own. Uh, we are going to be taking oh. a little bit of a summer break. Um, so go and use that time wisely and uh, get some fresh air, get some inspiration, uh, rejuvenate the creative blood. And um, yeah, get get yourself some good rest. Uh, but we will be back uh, after our two week break, um, which puts us into is that the middle of July? We are in July yeah, already. Of wow. July. Yeah, July. Oh, wow. But if you want to come visit us in France, we are not on holidays, so we'll still have the lives. <laughs> ah, interesting. I didn't know the uh, the French streams no. were carrying on. So yeah, we're there we go. On. Brush up on your we'll French. Be on holidays after. So yeah, if you ah, want to to hear cool. more about. Ah. I see. I see. I I know a little bit of French. I'm gonna, you know, try and uh, try and improve on it at some point. Um, oh yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. So hard to <laughs> to learn. So anyway, uh, thank you, Pauline, for showing through some of your work, and uh, thanks to everyone who's joined in the chat, and uh, thanks to uh, some new faces as well in the chat, and a few people who are uh, new to Adobe Live. I hope you return in uh, a couple of weeks on the UK stream, or if you want to try out the uh, French stream and. Um, any of the others or even the back catalog we've been doing this for a long time and uh, there's quite a lot to go and catch up on yeah so, so thanks again and uh, we will see you next time thank you so much thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for all your questions and have a great weekend everyone <laughs> all right see you bye bye